Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to submit jobs to CHTC's high throughput computing system. If you've never submitted jobs before or if you've only submitted jobs on a high performance computing system, uh, this is the tutorial for you. So before we begin, I'm going to talk a little bit about what our system is set up like. And so this will give you an understanding of what's happening behind the scenes when you are submitting jobs. So first thing is we have given you an account on the access point. This is a dedicated computer server for you to upload your files, upload your software, prepare your scripts. And this is how you access the pool of machines that we have. So. That's why it's called the access point. The pool of machines, which we call execution points, those are separate computer servers that actually execute or run your code. All of this is managed by HD Condor, which is our job scheduling software. So what we need to do is we need to tell HD Condor how to run our jobs on the execution points. And then once our jobs are run there, any outputs are then transferred back to us at the access point. And so this whole process is done in a non-interactive way. So you submit jobs, you can submit and forget them, come back in a couple minutes, a couple hours, and then when your jobs are done, you take a look at the outputs. And so this allows us to automate and submit lots of jobs at a time. One thing to note is the access point and execution points are completely separate machines. So anything that we want our execution point to do and any files that it needs to reference, all those things need to be referenced in our job submit file. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that as we move along. So first things first, let's go ahead and log into our access point. So I'm logged in on AP 2001. What we're going to do is we're going to run through a hello world tutorial so you get a feel of what it's like to submit a job on our system so i'm going to go ahead and make a directory to you know keep it nice and organized and run our job in here so i'm going to make a directory and call it hello world and then i'm going to go ahead and change directories or cd into this hello world directory and just a tip if you use tab after you've typed in a couple letters, um, hit tab, then it will fill in the rest for you. So that's tab autocomplete. Very useful. All right, I've gone into this directory. If I list the files with ls, I'll see that there's nothing in this directory. And that's expected. We just created it. So the first thing we need to do is create our job executable or the script that we're emulating a job with. So let's call that hello world.sh. I'm using the Vim text editor. You can use nano, whatever you're familiar with. So I have created hello world.sh and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste um, the inputs listed on our website here. And let's go over this briefly. So this is a bash script as denoted by the shebang at the top. So that number symbol, exclamation point, bin bash, that tells us we're using the bash shell script. Um, there's a couple of comments and then the command echo, hello chtc from job dollar sign one running on who am I at host name. So this prints out this sort of message with a couple of items. Um, this dollar sign one references to any argument after our hello world script. So if I do hello world.sh one, that one is gonna replace this dollar sign one. Or if I do hello world.sh two, that two is going to replace the dollar sign one here. We're also gonna use the outputs of the who am I and hostname command and print those out. Um, and we'll see that in action in a couple of minutes. The sleep 180 means that we're gonna have this job sleep for 180 seconds or just pause for 180 seconds. And the reason we're gonna do that is so that we can see it in the queue. So more on that later. 
Let's just go ahead and save and quit. And so if we ls again, we'll see that we have hello world.sh. Um, however, we can't actually run it because it's not executable right now. So we're going to change its permissions with this change mod command plus x for executable hello world.sh. And when we do that and list it again, you'll see that maybe the color of hello world.sh has changed. So let's give this script a little uh, test run to see what the behavior is going to be. So we do hello world.sh and remember it needs an argument. So I'm going to use the number two. It prints out hello chtc from job two running on who am I xalim at hostname, which is ap2001. And then now it's sleeping for 180 seconds. And that's quite a while to wait, which I'm not going to do right now. So I'm going to cancel it with control C. So this is the expected behavior of hello world.sh. Now let's transform this into a job for HD Condor to run. To do that, we need to tell HD Condor the specifications of our uh, script, how to run it and what resources it needs. So we're going to create what we call a submit file. And this is a simple text file. Um, so you could have it as hello world.txt, hello world whatever. Um, but I use the dot sub extension because it's very easy for me to distinguish at a glance what my job submit file is. So let's go ahead and create it and copy and paste the contents into this file. So before I go ahead and save and quit, let's look at the contents of this file. So there are a lot of comments in here that's denoted by the number symbol at the beginning of the line. And let's go through all of this. So the first thing is our executable. And the executable means the actual script we want to run. So that is going to be our hello world.sh script. You'll notice that the arguments is going to be a separate line from the executable. So instead of saying hello world.sh2 um, in our executable line, we have to say our arguments is going to be two, or in this case, we're using this variable called process. And so I'll talk about process a little bit more later. The next thing is the log error and output. These are text files that capture information about our job. So first, uh, the log file is HT Condor's way of capturing that metadata information. So where did your job run? How long did it run? How many resources did it use? Um, this contains a lot of information, but it's very useful to know, especially when you're starting out and testing uh, your jobs and seeing, well, do I need four gigabytes of RAM or do I need 32? That's where the log file comes in handy. The next thing is the standard error and standard output files. Um, these are text files that just capture anything that's printed to the screen. So most things that are printed to the screen, um, that's captured in what we call a standard output. And then if there are any error messages, that's captured in the standard error file. And because we are doing this in a non-interactive sort of way, you as the researcher, you're not going to see those messages printed to the screen on the execution point. You're off away, logged off, right? And so we need to capture that information into a place where you can look at it later. So it's going to be saved into these text files. And so the name of those text files are denoted by the values here. Um, you'll notice that we're going to use the variable cluster and process. More on that later. The next thing is uh, commented out, but um, very important. So in case if my hello world.sh was actually referencing another file, so maybe a CSV file or an image file, 
I would need to transfer that file with this transfer input files line um, because I need to make sure that CSV file also lands on the execution point. Because we don't have any extra input files, this is commented out, so I don't need it. The next block is the requirements. So you're always going to request some amount of CPU, some amount of memory, and some amount of disk. Um, there are other things you can add like GPUs, um, operating systems, but those aren't as usual to request. So we're going to ignore those for now. Because our job is fairly simple, I'm going to request only a few resources here. Lastly, at the bottom of the submit file, we have this queue statement. So this tells HD Condor to queue or run three instances of our job. So queue three for run three instances. You might do just a queue one to run one job, or maybe when you work up to scaling up your workflow, you might queue um, some complex workflows using a list of items. And so if you're interested in that, please check out some of our other guides on our website. Now back to this cluster and process. Um, so these are two default variables um, in HD Condor that are associated with each job. So the cluster is this kind of cluster of jobs, the cluster of three jobs that we're going to submit. So anytime you submit a job, it's assigned a cluster ID. So this is a unique job ID associated with every submission. And so when we submit a job, it's going to automatically fill in that number where we have cluster referenced here. Because we're submitting three jobs, we need to distinguish them from each other. So they're each assigned a process number. So it's going to be process number zero, one, and two for these three jobs. So let's see this in action. So we're gonna save and quit. And then if I LS again, I will see that I have two items in this directory. We're ready to submit. So we're gonna go ahead and do that with Condor submit, that's the command, and the submit file. So hello world.sub, which tells HU Condor everything about our job. When we hit enter, we'll see that it's submitted three jobs and has assigned us a cluster ID. The next thing we can do is we can start checking the status of our job. And to do that, we use the condor queue command. When you type that, it prints out a little table with the jobs that you have currently running or submitted to the queue. And so we'll see a couple of things. We have the ID number, when we submitted it. And right now we'll see that those three jobs are in the idle state. So the idle state means that they are just sitting around waiting to be matched and HD Condor is looking for that machine that can accommodate your jobs. You'll notice that we have the job ID and then the process number behind the decimal going from zero to two. We can also look at it in another way with this no batch flag. So Condor Q dash no batch. And you'll see that um, those three jobs are now separated into three separate lines. So the next thing is we can use Condor Watch Queue to look at the status of our jobs. And you'll see that currently our jobs are running. We can exit with Control C. And then if we LS or listed anything in our directories while our job is running, we will see that we have these log files. So let's go ahead and take a look at one. I'm going to go ahead and copy and use the cat command to print out uh, stuff about our job. And when I cat it, I can see our right at 1136. I submitted that job. Um, it started pretty much almost instantly within 41 seconds, transferred that small executable file, and then started running 
on this machine called E2466. And it started updating the memory usage of the job. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and put this in Condor Watch queue. Um, and then we'll come back to this when it's done. Okay, so you can tell it's done because now we have these um, green number symbols in our status bar. So let's go ahead and control C to finish and exit out of this Condor Watch queue view. If we list the files in our system again, um, we'll see that we have not only the log files, but we have standard error and standard output files. So let's look at this with a different view. So if we use ls-l, we'll see that our error files have zero bytes in them, so they're pretty much empty. We can confirm that with a cat command. So let's cat this error file, or we could even cat all error files, and we'll see that there's nothing printed in here. So very likely our job didn't run into any issues. Now if we cat the standard output files, so I'm going to grab everything with this wildcard, I have three different outputs. Awesome. And you'll see that job zero ran on E2014, job one ran on a different machine, and job two ran on another machine. So in this way, we have submitted three different jobs from a single submit file onto our high throughput computing system. So in summary, we've talked about the high throughput computing system and the basic layout of how it works. We talked about the executable and the submit file, the different components that are required in a submit file. And then lastly, we ran a job, queried the scheduler while the job was running, and then took a look at the outputs. I hope this tutorial was helpful and will help you get started in running your own jobs on our high throughput computing system.